global sea level change has been really interesting in the last year. Because global sea level actually fell between 2010 and 2011. It wasn't a huge drop, it was about five millimeters, and over the last 20 years, sea level's gone up by about five centimeters. So we're talking about a sort of 10% signal. Uh, but nevertheless, it's something we can measure, and it's something that's kind of created a lot of excitement in the sea level community and, and people that study global warming and sea level rise. One of the most amazing tools we have for measuring where the water's going is the GRACE satellites. This is actually a pair of satellites that chase each other around uh, as they go in orbit around the planet. And whenever one goes over something heavy, it actually speeds up a little bit from the pull of gravity. Then when the second one follows, it flies over the heavy thing too, and it catches up a little bit. And by measuring the distance between these two things very, very accurately, we can actually weigh the things that they're flying over. And what it's telling us this year is that the ocean actually lost weight. Water actually was transferred out of the ocean and back onto land. So what happened? Well, in 2010, there was a massive El Nino out in the Pacific Ocean, and it was followed immediately by a really, really strong La Nina, one of the biggest ones we've had in decades. Now, El Nino and La Nina have a big impact on rainfall. And what happened this year was rainfall that normally falls over the ocean was shifted over the land. And the net effect was that water was carried from the ocean and onto the land. And this caused a drop in sea level rise. Now the question is, is this drop gonna continue? And the answer is probably no. We know that El Nino is a cyclic phenomenon and also, we can see where most of the water went. In this case, it went in South America, Australia, Indonesia, and Southeast Asia. The ice sheets actually continued to lose mass, so Greenland and Antarctica still continued to dump ice into the ocean. But the effect of the El Nino was so big, it swamped that for just a little while. Australia had enormous floods last year. Uh, South America had a huge drought in 2010 and it was followed by flooding in 2011. So these represent massive movements of water uh, around on the continents and between the ocean and the land. These places are uh, close to the equator, they're at low latitudes, it's pretty warm. It's not like it was piling on to the ice sheets. So that means in another year, maybe two, this water is going to find its way back into the oceans and we're going to see sea level begin to rise again. In fact, the most recent observations suggest that that's already started. So the long-term outlook is definitely one of rising sea level and global warming.